Hello, my name is Eric Schumann. I have been working within the area of Lean and Agile Software Development and SAFE for many, many years, more than 20 at this point in time. And one recurring problem is to have people understand the counterintuitive effects of cues and how to handle them. Mainly, that it is more efficient and more effective to do less. Now, in the following video, I will use a traffic simulation to show you how this affects. I'm glad if you enjoy that and if you understand better about the connection of cues, of uh, <clears throat> utilization and of uh, uh, speed, speed limits, work in progress limits, etc. Give me a shout out if you like it. Okay, this is now a simulation of the traffic that we are looking at to draw some analogies to our projects and how we are running within real life systems. Here we see a highway that has two lanes and in the end we have a roadblock, a bottleneck. This is similar as we have it in our projects where often something happens at the end or several times throughout the project. For example, when we go into acceptance test, when we go towards release, deployment, handover between different parts of our organization. Now I have optimized the parameters in this model to have an almost optimal flow in this, where we achieve something of a throughput around 1450, 1550 vehicles per hour. Now we could see that if this is our project, that we are not utilizing all our capacity for full. As you see here, we have a complete lane that is utilized very, very seldomly. So couldn't we do better than this? Couldn't we utilize our resources, our project, our capacity in a better way? Let's see if we can get rid of this um, speed limit here. That might be something hindering us. So let's get rid of the speed limit and look at what is happening. And it can take a short while until the simulation shows this. Let's speed up a little bit. And you already see that sometimes here at the road box, some things are happening. And now you see there a queue starts forming up. You saw here the queue forming. And once the queue has started forming, it fills up drastically. It fills up very, very quickly until we have a very very long queue here along the whole system that is a bit like we run traditional projects in IT we have a lot of people being busy everyone is really busy all our resources are allocated and we are working like heck and that feels good but what happens with our throughput now our throughput has been diminished to about a third of what we had as a throughput previously so let's consider what happened here we had a good flow, we produced a lot of throughput and value, but not everything was utilized. And now everything is utilized and we have less of throughput. This is counterintuitive, but that's the reality in a lot of our projects. So obviously this was not a good decision. So let's reverse that change that we did previously and reintroduce the speed limit. But does this improve our throughput and our situation. Not really, because we already have this queue and the speed limit here does not help us. So the only thing that can help us here to achieve uh, higher throughput again is by emptying our queue, by emptying our backlog. So we need to avoid inflow and get rid of our queue, either by putting away stuff or by blocking the inflow here not accepting any new requirements, any new work in our project. Then we can get rid of it and we can increase the throughput and the flow throughout our system. As soon as it is emptied, I will go and get the cars in here again, again with about the same number of input. And we see that we have throughput again. We uh, will stabilize here the figure at around 14, 1500 very closely. Now that's happening. We can actually improve that throughput even more by having a clear perspective of what's happening here in the queue. Problem is that we have a long delay between what's happening up here, the inflow, and where the queue happens. But if I try to put on additional cars here, 
I can push up the throughput for a short while to something like 16, 1700 before a queue starts forming down there. Now it's about to happen, so I need to reduce the inflow. And you see that by looking at the throughput I can, and adjusting the inflow to that, I can actually, by looking at the queue, optimize the throughput in my system and getting more out of it per hour. So optimizing my throughput per, uh, for the queue increases the uh, putting effort on the queue, optimizing the throughput based on that increases the value that I'm delivering within my system. So that is one thing I can do. Another thing is that, as you see, we have both trucks and cars in our system. They have different parameters. They behave differently. And uh, the queuing theory and the theory of product development flow teaches us that we should reduce variance and we uh, should go for small batches. So by reducing the amount of trucks to zero, only having cars in my system, I can also push the boundaries. I can increase the, th uh, the inflow and the throughput in my system to something about 1900 almost without getting a queue. So this teaches us three things. When you have a system that has bottlenecks, optimize for the bottlenecks and monitor your queues. That will optimize your throughput. Once you have queues, they will hurt you. They will slow you down. So get rid of your queues. And having a system with smaller parts of a uniform size will help us to increase the throughput and push that further up. And these are important lessons to take with you when you talk about your projects and when you look at how you can optimize your projects.